I'm gonna need your, good morning. Hey baby, I'm gonna need your phone a little bit. Good morning, good morning. I don't know if anybody's signed on yet. Too small for you to read. Oh yeah, too small. But I'm waiting on you and I love you. Happy Monday. I don't, Pastor Bob, can you see if it's working? Yeah, I see some people on. This is um, June the 6th, and what a wonderful day this is to serve the Lord. What a wonderful day to spend time in His presence. Good morning, good morning. Ladies, as you come on, I really want to encourage you. I sense by the power of the Holy Ghost that this is the time and the season for us to not only Y'all are all so faithful to pray, but to begin to recruit others to pray with us. Now is the time for us to begin to recruit others to pray with us. Um, because we're in a season where God is going to bring much harvest in your lives. Much harvest in your lives. Much harvest in your lives. I've got some scriptures, my husband, that I sent to his phone because when, my, when I'm tied up here, Praying, I can't always read what I wrote. I put all my notes on my phone. I'm, I've become a technological girl now. But uh, I want to talk to you about some scriptures that, um, that God has just been speaking to me about. Um, we are in the last days, ladies. We're in the last days. Now, whether the last days means another 10 years, another 20 years, another 100 years, or it means another six months, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not Jesus. But I do know we're in the last days. And I do know when you read the Word of God, it talks about what the last days would be like. And so I want to read, um, we're in a Matthew, I believe we're in a Matthew uh, 24 uh, type of, that's where we are, scenario. Jesus predicts the destruction of the temple. Now, I want to I talk about this. Um, and I want to read this to you. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left upon another. He's, he's prophesying about the destruction of the temple, the actual physical destruction of the temple that shall not be thrown down. He's saying what you see right now is going to be completely rubble. The signs of the times and the end of the age is the next part of it. Now, as he said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when all these things will be. They're saying, okay, you said that this whole thing is going to get destroyed. You said that the temple's, but tell us when it's going to be. And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? What will be the sign of your coming and the end of your age? Uh, end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. And I will do it, and I'm sorry, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and, the, uh, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and various places. We're living this out. We're living this out. This is our life. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. So he's saying this is the beginning of the end. This is the beginning of the end. And then I want to go to, hold on a minute. I'm looking at my husband's. Zechariah 2. Now, you know, I, I was looking up Zechariah 2 and 5. And I just got to reading the whole, Zechariah was a prophet, okay? And as you come on, ladies, if you will just uh, share the broadcast and ask others to pray with us today. I really believe there's a lot of prophetic things that the Lord wants to say to us out of Zechariah today. First of all, we are at the end of the age. We are at the end of the age. This is the beginning of sorrows. Now, how much longer we have, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. We may have another 40 years. We may not have six months. 
And I mean that with all my heart. I don't know. I know that that 99.9% .9 of the uh, prophecies in the Bible have come to pass. I do know that. And I know that we're at a time where, where we are poised for the greatest awakening and revival that the earth has ever seen. And I believe there has to be another one before Jesus comes back. So, and I believe we're soon. We're right at the door of the greatest outpouring of God's Spirit in America and across the world that we've ever seen. We're right at the door. And that's why we're praying and fasting these 40 days. And if you're not, uh, I'm, I just want to encourage you. We started last Friday. And, you know, you may fast one meal a day. You may fast two meals a day. You may do like we're doing. We're doing three days uh, total, you know, water, juice. And then uh, four days where we fast breakfast and lunch and eat dinner. We're doing this for 40 days. And we're no meats, no sweets. Because we're, and I'll tell you why we're fasting. Because the Bible says uh, some of these things don't, don't even change. Fasting, prayer bends things. It's, and many times prayer will break things. But there are some things that are only broken. There's some strongholds that only come down. There's some people that only get delivered and saved when we deny our flesh. So I encourage you to get on some sort of regimen over these next 40 days. We started on Friday. We will end the 12th of July. And fast with us for the, for, for the awakening in your family. Fast with us for the awakening in your own life. Fast with us for uh, the harvest. Fast with us that, that everything in us that is not like Christ will be pulled out by the Holy Spirit. And that we will totally be submitted to his will, purpose, and plan for our lives. And we will, we will humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. You know what? God is in a position where he is, he is causing me to, to humble myself before him. Humble myself before him. He is looking for a people that will humble. Prayer is an act of humility. Fasting is an act of humility. It's saying, God, I, I'm not my own God. I'm not, I don't have the answers. You are my God. You are my trust. You are the, the power that works within me. So let's read Zechariah 2. Uh, it's called Vision of the Measuring Line. Now that's an important title. Then I raised my eyes and looked and beheld a man with a measuring line in his hand. And if I have ever felt that in the spirit, I feel God has got a measuring line. I was laying down for a nap over at Pastor Karen's house yesterday because we went to hear someone preach in Houston last night. And so I went home with her after church. And she has a scale in her guest room. There's a scale. And the scale reminds me of the judgment of the Lord. The, the judgment of the Lord, the scales, he weighs us. And, and I, if I've ever believed that God is out with measurements and, and, and measuring lines, it's now. He is, he is examining the church. He is examining the church. He is, he is telling us to make sure our oils are filled with, our lamps are filled with oil. Our lamps are filled with oil. So he said, Then I raised my eyes and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. So I said, Where are you going? Now this is the prophet giving his vision. And he said to me, to measure Jerusalem, to see what is the width and what is the length. To measure Jerusalem, to see what is the width and what is the length. And there was the angel, and there was the angel who talked with me going out, and another angel was coming out to meet him, who said to him, run, speak this to the young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire around her, and I will be the glory in her midst. And that jumped out at me. God is, God is putting a measuring line around his people all over the world. And, and while we're watching all kinds of crazy things happen, while we're watching wars and, and rumors of wars and pestilence and famines and earthquakes. And we're watching the earth literally groan because God is getting ready to come. God is putting a wall of fire around his people. See, Jerusalem 
is the apple of God's eye. Israel is the apple of God's eye. The physical Israel, the nation of Israel is the apple of God's eye. We have been grafted in. We are a part. We are a part of that family. We have been grafted into the fig tree. We have been brought in. I don't believe in replacement theology. I don't believe that now Israel's not the apple and we're the apple. I believe we're both the apple of God's eye. I believe we've been added to the kingdom. For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire around her, and I will be the glory in her midst. Future joy of Zion and many nations. Up, up, flee from the land of the north, says the Lord. For I've, uh, for I've spread you abroad like the four winds. Now he's talking to the physical Israel, but he's also talking to the spiritual Israel, which is us. Says the Lord, up Zion, escape you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. He's saying, look, those that are living in Babylon, those that have Babylon in their hearts, those that have, that, that have been living with things that are incongruent with my spirit, it's time for you to get up and run from that as fast as you can and run back to my altars, run back to my temple, run back to my land, run back to holiness, run back to consecration. God is calling us to a consecrated lifestyle, not just a day of prayer, but a lifestyle of prayer. Not just a day of fasting once a year, but a lifestyle of fasting where every week we fast maybe one day a week or every week we fast a couple of meals a week or we go on a, you know, a three-day or a 10-day fast once a quarter because we, we're living a lifestyle of prayer and a lifestyle of fasting because we want everything in us to, to die that is not like the Lord. He sent me, okay, for the Lord said, for the Lord, for thus says the Lord of hosts, he sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of my eye. When the enemy touches you, he touches the apple of God's eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them and they shall come and they shall become spoil for the servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. Sing and rejoice, O woman of prayer. Sing and rejoice, O woman of intercession. Sing and rejoice, you prophetic evangelist that God is raising up all across America. Sing and rejoice, Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for behold, I am coming and I will dwell in your midst, says the Lord. The Lord has promised he will dwell in our midst. He's dwelling in our living rooms. He's dwelling in our churches. He's dwelling in our places of worship. He's dwelling this Sunday Pastors with us, Pastor Sydney and Todd, we had uh, Jaden Hammock with us this su Sunday. And oh, that young man and his wife, they were beautiful. They did such an amazing job. But the glory of the Lord showed up. The glory of the Lord showed up. Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and they shall become my people. And I will dwell in your midst. Then you will know that I, the Lord of hosts, has sent me to you. And the Lord will take possession of Judah as his inheritance in the Holy Land. I want to remind you of the dream that I, I had, you know, a few days ago where I uh, dreamed that I was giving a big party. Oh, the party was so grand. It had, it, it was, the tables were beautiful. The centerpieces were beautiful. There was plenty to drink and eat, and the tables were full of opulent food, and we had all kinds of gifts, and we had a dancing, and, and there was an orchestra, and I looked, and also I had Reba with me, Reba McIntyre. I know that sounds funny, but Reba's there, and I'm like, Reba, you've come to help me, and she said, I'm here, Callie. I'm here to sing for your party, and I'm here to give gifts, and she's helping me get ready, and all of a sudden, I wake up. I knew in the dream that these women had been paid to be at this party. They were honored guests. They were honored by the authority on high. 
They were honored, and I was part of them, and I was bringing them in with the authority on high, which is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, to bless them, to just bless them. And Reba had come to help me. When I woke up, the Lord said, look up Reba. So my husband's, we're, we're in Austin, so my husband's there, and I said, baby, I just had a dream that I was at a party, and Reba was with me. Can you find out? And the Lord said, look up Reba. So he looked up Reba, and it means fourth born. It means four. It means door. It means um, Judah was the fourth tribe. So he said, he said, he's talking about Judah here. He said, and the Lord will take possession of Judah as his inheritance in the Holy Land. So everything, and then it means door. But here's what, this is when I knew it was for us. It means the four matriarchs. The four matriarchs. And that was Sarah, Rebecca, um, Leah, and Rachel. The four matriarchs. Where all the tribes came out of the four matriarchs. All right, let me keep reading. And the Lord will take possession of Judah in his inheritance in his holy land and will again choose Jerusalem. I believe God is choosing. He's choosing Judah again. He's choosing us. He's calling us. He is He's pulling up a remnant of people that will pray, fast, seek his face, cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, li literally live the Bible. Be a walking, talking Bible. Be a walking, talking example of, 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 the, of the book of Acts. A chapter Acts church. And will reign and choose Jerusalem. Be silent, all flesh. Be silent, all flesh. It's time for us to silence our flesh before the Lord, for he is around from the holy habitation. This is a time of holiness and consecration. And God is telling us to silence our flesh. Silence our flesh. We want to not only hear God clearly, but we want to see the power of God demonstrated. And you must silence your flesh if you want the power of God demonstrated in your life. You must silence your flesh. And God is saying, silence our flesh. Okay, I'm going to read Zechariah 3. Vision of the high priest. Now, now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what Zechariah was doing. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. See, Satan's always there to accuse the brethren, to oppose what God has called you to do. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? He's saying, I'm going to take care of my Jerusalem. And I will pluck them from the fire. I will protect them. They are mine. I will call them. I will woo them. And they will literally consecrate themselves and be everything I've called them to be. Now Joshua, listen to this, was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Joshua, the high priest, was filthy before God and, and, and the angels. See, our best is filthy before the Lord. Our best is liking before the Lord. Our best is not good enough before the Lord. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him saying, take away the filthy garments from him. And to him, he said, see, I have removed your iniquity from you and I will clothe you with rich robes. I pray. And I first of all pray. And I thank you, Lord, that you are removing the remnant of heaven, the remnant of the church. And you're removing the filthy garments and you are clothing us. Clothing, clothing us, us with the robes of righteousness. You are clothing us with the robes of righteousness. And you are raising up a holy church all across the world, all across America. See, this was a physical thing that he was prophesying, but it was also a spiritual thing. It was two in one. Because there is a physical Israel there is a physical Jerusalem. There is a physical people 
But there's also a spiritual people, and there's a spiritual church, and there's a spiritual Jerusalem, and we are a part of it. And I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head, and they put the clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by the coming branch. Then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways, and if you will keep my command, then you shall also judge my house, and likewise have charge of my courts. I will give you places to walk, among those who stand there, hear, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for they are a wondrous sign, for behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon the stone are the seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Can a nation be saved in a day? Can a nation be saved in a day? Oh yes, when, when Zion travails. A nation can be saved in a day when Zion travails. And I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. And in that day, says the Lord of hosts, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine and under his fig tree. Lord, I just thank you that you are purifying a remnant of women, a remnant of men. And a nation can be saved in a day. A nation can be saved in a day. When we pray, we call a fast in Zion. When we call a solemn assembly, and we call for a time of consecration, and we say Pentecost was Sunday. Pentecost was Sunday. But I am asking you, ladies, to ask God to give you a burning, burning passion for prayer. Morning, noon, and night. Pastor Callie is really, really contemplating praying every day at noon. In fact, I, I, I may just start that tomorrow, praying every day at noon as well as at 8 o'clock in the morning just through this fast because I just sit and now's the time to pray like never before. And now's the time to seek God like never before. That now's the time. 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 I encourage you to pray morning, noon, and night. Morning, noon, and night. Morning, noon, and night. That's not something I would probably keep up after the 40 days, but I feel such an urgency to pray morning, noon, and night in this time of consecration. God is getting the church ready for the greatest outpouring of the Spirit. He is also strengthening your resolve where that you will never give up because there are the coming things to our land and our world that will cause many to wax cold. There are, there are prophetic people that are not of God. There are preachers preaching a, a gospel that's not the true gospel. I hate to say it, but it's true. We don't serve a new age gospel. We don't serve a new age gospel. We don't serve a new, new age God. No, we're not new age. And I'm not saying that everything that, a, that the new age people do is bad. Okay? They've got probably some things that are good, but well, that's not the gospel. And, 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 you know, I'm sure some of their health practices and, you know, there's things that, that a, lot of the, a lot of these off religions got, got things from the Bible. There was a thing that went around for a long time called the secret. 
And of course, because it was so big, I went out and checked it out. Checked it out. Well, there were a lot of principles in their re, their thought process that came straight from the Bible. But you know what? When you take a great chocolate pie and you throw a little doo doo in it, it ain't worth eating no more. And Jesus' word cannot be perverted. And Jesus' gospel message cannot be perverted. Uh, if you if you do that, you mess up God's word, and then you're you're you are um, you're headed for a curse. We don't add to God's word. We don't take away God's word. We believe God's word in its entirety. I didn't write it, but I believe it. I didn't write it. Holy men of old moved as they were moved on by the Holy Ghost, and they wrote it. But I believe His word. And we must know his word so we know what we believe. We must know his word so we know what we believe. You want to know why people fall by every wind of doctrine? They don't know God's word. They don't know what the word of God says. They don't know what the word of God calls us to. So, Lord, I just thank you that we're going to know your word that we're going to understand your word. We're going to have a passion for your word. We're going to have a passion for prayer. We're going to have a passion for revival. We're going to have a passion for everything that you've called us to do. We're going to have a passion for fasting. We're going to have a prayer lifestyle and a fasting lifestyle. And what God has called us to do in this last day is going to call for sacrifice. Sacrifice of our time, sacrifice of our money, and sacrifice of our life. Do you realize that our patriarchs, that the disciples, that every one of them died a martyr but John? That a lot of, the, of our forefathers in the Lord died for the gospel. What if we're headed there again? Are we strong enough to die for the, to die for the gospel? I'm praying I am. I'm working on it. I'm, I'm asking God to help me. Lord, I just prophesy to 263 women right now that you're putting a resolve in them that will never, ever be broken. I prophesy to 264 women that you're going to serve God with all of your heart, that you're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles. That your, your, your towns, your cities, your counties, and your states are going to be ablaze with revival. And prayer is going to become a passion of yours. Morning, noon, and night. Morning, noon, and night. I think for the rest of this week, I'm going to do, pray at 1230. I'm going to pray at 8 o'clock in the morning, 1230, uh, every day at noon. For 30 minutes, I won't go past 30 minutes. Uh, just, just for, just for this 40 days, and then I'm going to pick up in the evening, uh, around six o'clock, for 30 minutes, just for these 40 days. Now, we start a conference uh, this week, and so what I'll do is I'll pray right before uh, the conference starts. Our conference starts at at seven every night, but. I'm going to do this for the 40 days. I'm going to pick up the 12:30, so we'll pick up at noon 30. So you can just join me for 30 minutes if you've if you've got time. Have others join me, and then six o'clock for this 40 days um, until we're through um, until we're until we're through with this fast. So Lord, I I just because I, I just heard the Lord say He wants me to take it up. Oro romo daria ha daria sandaria ki. I oro romo daria sandaria mo daria ha daria. A sandaria mo kondaria sai. I oro romo daria sai. And the other mo hondaria sai. The word of the Lord is to lay prostrate before him. Lay before him. Lay before him morning, noon, and night. Lay before him. And whether you're on this broadcast with me or not is not what I'm saying. I'm talking about praying morning, noon, and night. Lay before him. Call on him. The riches of heaven are literally hanging over our heads, 
ready to be dispersed by the Holy Spirit, the riches of heaven. The riches of heaven are going to be poured over your family. The riches of heaven are going to be poured over your life. The riches of heaven. And that will look like your children being saved and delivered of demons. That will look like your husband being saved and delivered of demons. That will look like your wife, some, some wives being saved and delivered of demons. That will look like your neighborhood beginning to come. And when you walk out to the mailbox, they say, can I come to your church? What is it about you? I see a glow over you. There's an angel over your head. There's something going on in your life. I saw a fire over your house. I see a fire. You know, someone had a vision. Uh, someone had a vision of uh, 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 in our church, and I forgot to tell it Sunday, but Pat, your, your vision is coming to, to pass. Someone had a vision that they saw the fire of God over our our building and 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 people were just pulling in the parking lot and just kneeling they were pulling in the parking lot and just kneeling they were pulling in the parking lot because God was doing something sovereign and I, I believe that's gonna happen over your houses and over your lives it's this is a sovereign time we are moving into a new era with the Lord we're moving into a sovereign time of revival and worship and prayer and consecration and this 40 days of consecration is going going to precede a sovereign move of God. And I believe it's not only going to just be in our homes, not only going to just be in our churches, not only going to just be in her voice uh, at our convention and our gathering, but I believe it will that, that it's going to be powerful there. And if you hadn't got your tickets, my God, get your ticket. My God, get your ticket. Get your ticket. But it is going to sweep my husband's laughing at me. It's going to sweep all across America. Why are you laughing at me? You're so funny. He, 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 gets, he gets tickled at my crazy self. It's going to sweep all over America. And it's going to sweep all over the earth. <laughs> He's laughing at me. Oh, I can't help it. I am who I am. I love you so much. I, I'm telling you, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And this prayer... Is a, it is to prepare us to be able to handle the blessing. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's to prepare us to be able to handle the harvest and the blessing. Oh, I, ladies, if I've ever asked you for anything, I want you to hear me. I want you to begin to recruit other Christian women to pray with us. Begin to recruit. You must begin to ask. It is time for the women to arise. Now is time. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. For us to call Christian women to invite your neighbors, invite your friends on your Facebook, invite your people, invite them to pray with us, invite them to fast with us, invite them to do what 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 God has called us to do. I oro romo sondri ahai i kaya na da romo sondri asai. I want to encourage you. This is put on uh, YouTube uh, every day, and I, uh, I want to remind Miss Pat if she could do that. Make sure that's done every day. This is put on YouTube so that you can catch this on YouTube as well. Catch this on YouTube as well. Uh, Lord, I just thank you for what you're doing. I'm going to ask my husband to come and lead us in communion. Uh, I will be back on today at 1230 for 30 minutes, for 30 minutes. And we will just pray for no longer than 30 minutes. It'll probably be more like 20. I'm just going to do this through the 40 days. And then I will be back at six o'clock. And uh, I'm going to work on, uh, probably won't do it today, but I will make sure we're, I'm going to try to be on Instagram for the rest of the week as well as Facebook. We love you. And I'm going to turn this to my husband and, um, and let him take us through communion and pray over us. God bless you. Share the broadcast, ladies.
to communion. Ready? Today we're going to focus on in communion on what Paul describes as God's unspeakable gift. In 2 Corinthians 9.15, let's look at it. I was just looking it up. But thanks be to God for his indescribable gift in the NIV. In the New Living Translation, thank God for this gift too wonderful for words. Uh, the English Standard Version, thanks be to God for his in inexpressible gift. Unspeakable, indescribable, priceless is another description. He was talking about the gift of Jesus giving his life for us, for us to receive salvation. It's all summed up in John 3.16, but it's uh, sometimes we, we see it so many times we don't really pay attention to what we're reading. But it says, um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only one and only unique one and only son. The words there, so loved, it's not... <clears throat> Just, he didn't just love the world, but he loved not just, and we're not talking about when he loved the world, he didn't love this earth ball here, this carbon earth ball, that some people are willing to make a religion of loving this earth. He loved the people that he put here. God loved the wor world of people so much that he was willing to give his unique one and only son so that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. He did not come into the world to condemn the world. That was not his major function. So in Romans 8, 1 says, there's no, therefore no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. He didn't come in the world to condemn the world. The world was condemned already. He came to save us. He came as the angels proclaimed on his birth, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. So we have good news. And our, our job is to, to spread the good news of God's salvation offered to us freely. We can receive it, but it costs him everything. So Lord, we just thank you for your unspeakable gift of eternal life. We thank you for your undescribable, extravagant, passionate love that pursued us and paid the price and lord help us be willing to do the same help us to love you enough back to be willing to emulate and copy this kind of love and lord we're, you're going to do it through us by your power of your holy spirit you're going to love through us with this unconditional love he chose he chose to love you and there's nothing you can do about it he's going to love you through the good and the bad from the beginning to the end there's no end to his love. It's eternal. It's permanent. So he chose you, and he chose to love you. He made up his mind, and there's nothing you can do to change it. And he died for you. Everyone, everyone that wants to can go to heaven. Some people will choose not to, but it's not his choice. It's yours. So, Lord, we thank you for your body and your blood, the expensive price this gift that was given for us. We thank you for that. And, uh, unspeakable gift it's so extreme it's so extravagant that you are willing to pay it that the world of people might be saved and lord help us to get that message in our heart we thank you lord we receive your body the healing that you purchased the peace that you purchased the freedom from pain the freedom from iniquities by your blood the freedom from guilt to shame, the cleansing it brings to our conscience of the consciousness of sin is washed away by the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, the most powerful blood in the universe, the most powerful covenant in the universe, and every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord over all. Every demon must bow to the name of Jesus. Every sickness must bow to the name of Jesus. Every fear must bow to the name of Jesus today. We thank you for the great and passionate love that you have for your children. 
Help us to get it and help us to receive it so that we can give it out. In Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for every good thing that comes from your hand today. You're working all things together for the good of the kingdom, which is for our good as well. God bless you. Thanks for praying with us today. See you tomorrow, God willing.